that uh, Christianity holds that they offer people is everlasting life. Imagine if Satan could offer people everlasting life. Well, he has the, they have the ability to extend life, and they will play that card at some point. And even if they only prolong life several hundred years, you have to live several hundred years to find, find out that you don't have everlasting life, and it will devastate the membership of the Christian churches. Now, those of you who have, have read the report from Iron Mountain, you know that they uh, created three pseudo-wars as a substitute for an actual fighting war, and that those three wars are being implemented today to keep us in a state where they can uh, uh, have all kinds of laws to control us. And those three wars are the war on the environment, the war on drugs, and then, of course, their plans to create a mock alien invasion. I have uh, talked briefly on the radio for Prophecy Club about the flying saucers, somebody very high up in the New World Order who was brought to Christ by a close friend of mine has talked about piloting the flying saucers. Yes, the United States government has flying saucers. And uh, before he became a Christian, he considered that the beings that were co-piloting these flying saucers were aliens. But then when he became a Christian, he took a second look and realized they were demons. It's rather interesting. I have tape recordings of some of the aliens talking. They send shivers up my back. They sound exactly like, I would imagine, a demon to sound like. And what's further interesting is these people are saying, these aliens, that they have been around for something like a half a million years. And I'm thinking, when do we give these aliens resident status? They have already moved a lot of uh, the first contingents of foreign troops into the United States. Some of you, I'm sure, have seen the maps where they, uh, that they came up with years ago where they had planned out which foreign nations would, uh, would send troops to what regions of the United States. They don't want Americans um, patrolling American regions for the New World Order why they might be too loyal to their um, American civilians. They have uh, built a German air base in New Mexico that the Germans control. And here in Kansas, you will notice that uh, they have been training Russian police at Yoder, Kansas, and that there have been large contingents uh, of Russian troops and, and military hardware that have been brought through the United States, some of it stockpiled. Uh, one witness talked to me about the caves in Mexico, which had large stockpiles of Soviet weapons. And of course, then, is, are there plans, there are long range plans of what they're going to do uh, with this planet. And uh, eventually, it seems like they want to and this is looking way into the future, move things to Australia as the center of things. If you will look at things right now, the mother country of the Illuminati is England. And the center of England is London. But there are two different Londons. Maybe you are not familiar with that. <clears throat> there is a small enclave within Greater London, which is also called London, but it's the financial district, and it is called the city, okay? And it is a private enclave. And what is interesting about the city of London, which is controlled by the Illuminati, is that it sets where that financial district can have financial transactions because of the way the time zones are set all around the world within one day. It's the only location in the world where they can conduct from, from one particular point transactions with all the world's financial markets. And that has been, that area of the world has been 
like the center point for the Illuminati for a long time. But what I'm saying is, is eventually they hope to move that. And Denver and Atlanta are two of the cities that they have big plans for in the future. And uh, they also plan for some major developments in southern China to build it up. They also plan to uh, do a lot of activity with the asteroids, mining them, a lot of activity on Mars. Reality is far from what we have seen, people, and their technology is far beyond what they have allowed us to see. In fact, this ties back with the mind-controlled slaves. They are only releasing technology at a rate that they want to. Now, if you invent something that's way beyond its time to, for, and helpful for mankind, it will be suppressed. But one of the uh, mind-controlled slaves that I've spent time with, she was a uh, mind-controlled slave within the Watchtower Society, and she was programmed at a particular point in time to invent a particular invention. And then other people were programmed to form a company around that. Satan is a control freak, people. Things are not happening out of control. They can't. God works off of love. But Satan is, doesn't. Love doesn't seek its own. But Satan works off of hate. Everything in his world system has to be tightly controlled. Because he, he's trying to imitate God. He wants to be omnipresent and omnipotent. So he has all of these spy satellites in the world and all these spies on the, on the, on the ground to try to control. He's a control freak. And everything in his world system seeks his own. It's all working towards these goals. And so what people see as random are actually working to very, our very specific and very controlled parts or elements of a plan. And I can guess I can get myself into more trouble on this videotape by talking about something that's controversial, the Mars colony, which has, a, uh, has slaves up there. That's their, they've already brought the New World Order um, into reality there on Mars. They haven't quite brought it into total fruition here on Earth. And in my 93 newsletters, I pointed out prior to the um, spacecraft that was to go there in 93, I gave a list of American and Russian spacecraft that had been sent to Mars. If you think back on things, if you're my age, you'll remember that when I was a child, the big issue was, is there life on Mars? Well, after sending many, many spacecraft to Mars, and some of these cost billions of dollars, scientists still tell us they don't know whether there's life on Mars. And if you look at that list, I listed the spacecraft that had gone to Mars, they all malfunctioned. Very strange. And so I told my, my readers in my newsletter in 93, I said, look at the past history of how all of these have malfunctioned or produced results that were of no significance. I said, the same thing will happen to this multi-billion dollar space probe. And when it did, people began to think, well, maybe Fritz is right. This is pretty amazing that he could predict that this space probe would have problems. OK, we've got uh, three lists. Shall I go on? OK, we've got three lists. Um, people have consistently asked me about the three lists, the red list, the blue list, the yellow list. One of my friends decided to follow the blue mar uh, uh, splotches, markers that they've put on these road signs. And strangely enough, it led them to a site that shouldn't have had Bob Dwyer, but it did and looked like it had been built for the purpose of being a concentration camp in the future. Yes, that's what these lists are all about. The red list will, will be, um, it's 187,000 uh, Americans. And the lists, which are on computers, have already been distributed. And uh, perhaps the scenario that will happen uh, 
and to round up people on the red list will go like this. And this comes from a man who, part of it comes, um, it, the bulk of it comes from a man who was the inspector for the Joint Chiefs of Staff of these concentration camps. Uh, there may be a, an electrical blackout at night. If you have an electrical blackout, watch out. It might be a cover for them coming for the red list. And then people like these Russians who, who are hiding, they have these red, uh, the names. They will come at 4 a.m. just like they came at that time for Jesus. They'll pull you out of your house, and they will, they will take you in a van, take you to like a cul-de-sac where a helicopter's flying in that are black, they're flying off of the, their regular system navigation, will take you to sites and then take you to locations where you will be terminated. Well, as we look at all of this prophecy coming to pass, we have to say, well, what really is the answer? I don't know about you, but I would like the rapture to have taken place about six minutes ago. But it didn't. And the reality is we don't really know. Prophecy is a very difficult thing because we're given a blessing if we try to figure it out, Revelations 1-3. But God also tells us that we see through a glass darkly. He doesn't give us all the pieces of the puzzle. So we stand in front of a puzzle trying to put all of the pieces together but we don't have all the pieces. We're given a reward to look, but we aren't given all the pieces. We don't know how they all fit together. So when we see these things that point to the fact that we truly are close to the end. See, folks have been saying for a long time, well, they've been saying for 2,000 years Jesus is going to come back. But today with these kind of evidences, this kind of information, it shows us truly time is very short. What do we do? There are people that will tell you what you need to do is dig a hole in the side of the mountain and pull in the entrance. And I do believe God is telling some Christians to store nuts for the winter. And my answer to that is do as God tells you to do. But I can tell you that the physical preparations don't mean anything unless you've made the spiritual preparations. So the first question is if the rapture hasn't happened, and we're going through tr trouble. If we're in a detention facility, if we find ourselves on a black helicopter, if we find ourselves in a soup line and there's no soup, if our electricity's been cut off, if our money's been cut off, shut up in a bank for six, six uh, months or so, how do we handle that? What do we do? What do we do when we're out of food? Well, first of all, we better have God's protection. We better have made some spiritual arrangements. So how do we get God's protection is the first question. Second question is, how do we get our name written in the book of life so we get to go to heaven when we do die? Well, first of all, how do we get God's protection? The only way God protects us is if we're clean, with no sin, no spot, no wrinkle. That's our objective in life. Now, how do we do that? First, we have to clean up. Well, the good news is that there's still detergent at the store, and the name is the blood of Jesus. First thing we have to realize is Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. We've all made a mistake. So if we're going to get our sins washed away, we have to realize that they're there. Next is we have to realize we can't earn it. Ephesians 2.8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, if it's a gift, then how do we reach out and take that gift? How do we reach out and ask for our sins to be cleansed? Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We've simply got to say it and got to believe it. Acts 2, 38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But what does that word repent? In my life, one day, having made a mess of it, I sat down and I said, God, I made a mess of my life. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a promise, I'll make you a deal. If you'll give me another chance, 
If you'll forgive my sins, if you'll wash me clean from here on out, I'm yours. I will do my best to follow your laws. I will read your book. I will see that I learn it. And from here on out, I'm yours. That's repenting. Holy Spirit, I ask you to go out and knock on the hearts of those people. Whose names you'd like to write into the book of life? Those people you'd like to wash clean so that you can save them and provide for them in the day of trouble. That they would make that decision this evening. And also 